welcome to Salem Lutheran Church on this, the Feast of the Sunday after All Saints Day. Uh, this is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday means it's the first Sunday after All Saints Day, which of course is always November 1st. And of course you all know the history behind All Saints Day, correct? Well, I'm going to bore you all for just a little bit with some of the history so you understand the meaning of this day. Uh, according to the history, of course, at one time, the Roman Empire ruled most of the civilized world. But there came a time in the early 300s when there was a contest of who would be the next emperor. And according to it, it came down to two guys. One was a guy named Constantine. And according to the story, he was laying in his cot preparing for the battle the next day when he happened to have a vision. And he looked up and he saw the clouds part. And he saw a cross descending from the clouds and the voice of God saying to him, by this sign you shall conquer. The next day uh, when Constantine woke up, he told all of his soldiers to paint a red cross on their shields. And they went off into battle and fought the battle that history knows as the Battle of Malvern Bridge, which Constantine was victorious at and became the emperor of Rome. In appreciation to the Christian God, who had given to him this great victory, he signed the Edict of Milan. The Edict of Milan granted Christian freedom to all Christians. It allowed Christians to worship publicly without fear of reprisals, without fear of arrest or death. And so for the first time, Christians could openly gather and worship in the Roman Empire. The story is told that in the city of Rome on that day, November 1st, by the way, of that year, that all the Christians gathered for the last time in the catacombs, which were the tunnels under the city of Rome, where they had been worshiping all these past years and where they had conducted Christian burial and buried their dearly departed in the walls of these caves. On that particular day, the Christians gathered down in the catacombs for one final time. They unearthed all those that had been buried in the tombs and they carried them out in a solemn procession and buried them in a ground that had been set aside by Constantine the Great. Ever since that day, November 1st, we celebrate that day as a day in which we remember all the saints of the church. Not just the Peters and the Pauls and the Marys. They all have their own special days. But we remember all those special saints in our life. A mother, a father, an uncle, an aunt, a cousin, a brother, a sister. Someone who touched our lives and led us to Christ in their own way. Today we celebrate all of those, even as I celebrate St. Alma, and St. Walter, and St. Jacob, and St. Elizabeth, all the saints in my life who have led me to understand what it means to be a child of God. So on All Saints Day, we remember all those saints, and I hope you'll be remembering the saints who touched your life and who were special to you. We remember them today. And with that introduction, let us rise to the glory of God. For this is the day the Lord has made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts, for yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. On this All Saints Sunday, we remember those saints as we sing, for all the saints. It's 422 in your red hymnal if you want to follow along with the music.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will shallow up death forever, excuse me, swallow. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See the home of God among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for this Sunday is a reading from the Gospel of John in the 11th chapter. Before I read it, I want to tell you a little bit about this Gospel. So, and since I can get a little long-winded sometimes, I'm just going to have you sit down. I love this Gospel. It's one of my favorite Gospels. I've used this Gospel lesson probably at more funeral services than any other Bible passage because it involves life and death. But in order to understand it, you need to understand a little bit of background of the whole thing. Uh, this story involves three of Jesus' closest friends, not any of the disciples, but it was three people we think that Jesus met one time when he had gone up to Jerusalem. And there he met two sisters and a brother, Mary, Martha, Lazarus. And they became good friends. And every time we see Jesus coming back or going into Jerusalem, he always seems to stop there. Uh, and spend a day or two with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. I think it's because Martha was a good cook. Because every time they're there, there's always food involved. And I think Martha was a great cook. And if I was one of those guys with 12 other guys who spent all of his time on the road, wouldn't it be nice to get to a home and have a good woman cook you a nice hot meal and be able to sit back and put your feet up? Yeah. And I think that's what Jesus looked forward to. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, good friends. But the story goes at one time, Lazarus got very sick. And so as soon as uh, he got ill, Martha sends word to try to get Jesus to come back, see if he could do something. But by the time Jesus gets the word and starts making his way back, Lazarus has already died. In fact, the funeral was held three days before Jesus arrives. But the story is that once again, uh, when Martha hears that Jesus has come, she drops everything. Where is she? She's in the kitchen. Where else would Martha be but in the kitchen cooking? For them, some of those relatives who are still hanging around after the funeral. But she hears Jesus has come to town, and she rushes out, and she meets Jesus on the outskirts of the city. And there, this conversation takes place. 
When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound, his stripes of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have filled with your presence and power. And we ask on this blessed Sunday of the All Saints that we remember your love and mercy and how you have bestowed it upon us each and every day of life. In his name we pray. Amen. You know, I, I'm not sure... Uh, if the family that I grew up in was typical of your families, maybe so. Maybe it was just the times that we lived in. But I grew up in a family where you were taught not to show a whole lot of emotion. You know, I don't ever remember a time when I saw my mother cry. I certainly never saw my father cry because real men don't cry. And that's what I learned from my father. Real men don't show emotions. And for that reason, I always felt, I, I think, a little bit out of place in my family. I mean, I'm kind of an emotional guy. And anybody who's been around me long enough knows that that's the case. I mean, I cry at sad movies. I get tears in my eyes when I watch the end of uh, Brian's song and see Brian Piccolo die of cancer. And if you've never seen that movie, you should. I mean, I even cried when Yoda died in Return of the Jedi. Poor Yoda, no. And so that's one of the reasons that I, I guess I love this morning's gospel lesson. Because it says to us, you know, it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve when you lose someone that was special to you. When you lose someone that you love. It's okay to feel that pain when someone you care deeply about is taken from you. I tell that to people, used to tell that to people all the time who had lost a loved one. I would say, you know, the only way you can escape those feelings of grief and sadness that you have is if you never love someone. But if you ever dare to let someone into your heart, if you ever dare to love someone, when you lose them, it hurts. It hurt Jesus. He loved Lazarus. He loved that family. He loved Mary and Martha. He and his disciples, as we said before, would stop in all the time, have meals there, take a rest and relax. He loved that family. And so he cried when he heard about his friend who had died. Today is All Saints Day. Today is a day that we set aside for the church for us to remember. For us to remember all of those dear people, not just the great saints, as I said before, not just the Marys and the Marthas, they have their own day. They have their saint day and we remember them then. But today is a day when we remember all those people who touched our lives. A mother or a father, a brother or a sister, a husband or a wife, a friend. We remember today those people who touched our lives and whose absence leaves a void in our lives. And as we remember those people, we of course should sow some sadness. A tear 
perhaps comes to our eyes. And that's okay. That's okay. Because anytime you let someone into your life, anytime you open yourselves up to someone, when you lose that person, it hurts. And those tears that you shed, those are drops of love. Because the only way that you can avoid pain is if you never let someone love you or if you never love someone else. If you never let someone get close to you, then you can avoid that pain. But if you do let someone in, you will feel pain for those people who are special to you. And that's okay to cry. Because even Jesus cried when he lost his good friend, Lazarus. He loved him. And it hurt him to lose him. But in the midst of this, there's something else we need to remember. You know, I, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, again, for moments like funerals, comes from 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians was the first letter that Paul ever wrote. In fact, it's the oldest, what we consider, books of the New Testament. First one written before the Gospels, before the book of Acts, before any of the other letters. 1 Thessalonians was written. And like so many of Paul's letters, it was written because a church was having some concern, some questions. And so they asked Paul, and Paul wrote back and answered them. But one of those questions had to do with life and death. And the question was, well, let me put it this way. This was a good Christian church. They really loved God. And they believed that God was going to come back again someday. And Christ, when he returned, would take them all to heaven. But they thought that was going to happen in their own lifetime, you know, in the next few weeks or months, maybe. But then the months became years, and the years became decades. And as time went on, people in their church started dying. And so their question was, well, what happens to those people who have died? What happens to those people who aren't here when Jesus comes back again? Are they just sort of, you know, out of luck? Bad timing? What? And St. Paul writes back to them, and he answers their question. And he says in his letter to the Thessalonians, Brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which have fallen asleep, that you sorrow not as those who have no hope. Because if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. <coughs> we grieve, but not like those who have no hope. Because if we believe, if all that stuff that we talk about on Sunday mornings like today, if we really believe that stuff, if it's more than just nice words we say to make ourselves feel good, but if we really believe it, then it changes the meaning of death. Because death is not the answer. It's not the final answer. Brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which have fallen asleep, that you sorrow not as those who have no hope. Because if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So for all those saints that we mourn today, we are sad that we are no longer have them with us, but we rejoice that they are with their God. Yes, today can be a sad day or it can be a happy day for us because we know that life is the final word. It can become a day of joy. It can become a day of great rejoicing. And so we do not grieve today on All Saints Day for those who have died like those who have no hope. We grieve, but we know all those saints whose lives we celebrate today, whose lives we remember, all those saints that we'll be naming a little later in our worship service and our prayers and remembrance, we know that the time is going to come when we will see them all again. You know, I still sit up here and I look back there and I still miss Patty. And I wonder, where is Patty? Why isn't she here today? And I remember she's here. We just can't see her. But I know the time will come when I will see Patty again. And she'll probably ask me if I want coffee. Because <laughs> that's how Patty always greeted me. She'd come to Bible study, and she'd walk in and say, I'll make coffee. And I'll say, I already made it, Patty. Oh. But I know that's probably the first thing she'll do when I see her up in heaven. She'll want to know if I want a cup of coffee. And I know that will happen. It's not just a joke. I know it will happen because I believe that this is not the final answer of death. I believe that life is the final answer. And so I know that one day we will gather with all those saints. As that song said to us, for all the saints, and that includes us, 
For all the saints, we will gather once again in heaven. But my real prayer for you today is that even as we remember those saints, my hope is that you will become those saints for the next generation. And that someday, somewhere, in some church, they'll be gathering on an All Saints Sunday, and they'll be talking about the saints who have passed this from life to life. And the pastor will say something like, I hope and I want you all to stop and remember those people who in your life touched you and led you to the cross. And that somebody will close their eyes and at that church service, they will remember you as that saint. May God bless you and be with you on this All Saints Day as we continue to celebrate that long list, that long line, that long chain of saints that leads from here, from the cross, to eternity. Amen. We continue our service now with the hymn of the day, which is, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, let us rise to the glory of God. part of our service where we have the remembrance of the faithful departed as we remember all of those who have left us this past year. Uh, at the sound of each name as they will be uttered during this prayer, a tone will be sounded to celebrate their passing from life to life. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, for all your servants and witnesses of times past. For Abraham, the father of believers, and for Sarah, his wife, 
for Moses, the lawgiver, and Aaron, the priest, for Miriam and Joshua, for Deborah and Gideon, for Samuel and Hannah, his mother, for Isaiah and all the prophets, for Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene, and for Stephen, the first martyr, and for all the saints and martyrs in every time and in every land. In your mercy, give us as you gave them the hope of salvation and the promise of eternal life. Through the firstborn from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we remember those who together with us stood at the foot of the cross, who heard the Easter truths at the empty tomb, who have gone before us into those heavenly mansions, and who now gather round your throne. Julia Barnes, Faye Franks, Levon Hyder, Patty Huff, Vicki Hun, and all those that we now mention in our hearts and in our thoughts. Let us remember those whom we have loved in the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blessing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling leaves and the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. As long as we live, we will remember them, for they are a part of us forever. Amen. And now living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. harvest and the 
goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refugee for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us. trust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, also with you. and now please extend that greeting to one another, our 360 degree two-handed wave. There you go. And by the way, George, it's good to see you back in church. And you've even managed to stay upright the whole time. Good to have you back with us, George. Thank you for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we will be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance, and I now return you to our service.
Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, and yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. So pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. Now take and eat, for this is the body of Christ.
Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ. And now may this body and this blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us arise in prayer. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. And now receive the blessings of our Lord. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. We uh, close our service off with uh, our concluding hymn, our sending hymn. Uh, somebody asked me before church if I got my Baptist back on, and I guess I did, because the song is, Shall We Gather? Well, this is the last time I'll see you for about three weeks. So while I'm gone, until we meet again. Don't have the, don't have the, the bidding down there? Thank you. <laughs> Boy, I hope this is not an omen of what things are going to be like when I'm not here. 
All right, led on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord.